civil and environmental engineering. So today we have Professor Der Kyogian coming from Berkeley, UC Berkeley. And let me tell you a bit about Armin. He got his uh, bachelor's and his MS degree from which country? Iran. From Iran, University of Tehran in Iran. And then he got his PhD from University of Illinois. And we have something in common with Armin. He was a professor here at USC for three years before he moved to UC Berkeley. Um, I was reading his list, his CVs, his long list of achievements, and I won't be able to because we, have, we need some reserve some time for the seminar. But uh, he is a member of the uh, of ASC, member of ERI, member of the uh, Seismological Society of America. He is also uh, the, a member of the Civil Engineering Risk and Reliability Association called CIRA, and I think he served as a president of CIRA in, in a few years, in a few years ago. Um, he is a recipient of many awards, uh, including the ASCE Walter Hubbard Civil Engineering Research Prize, the CIRA Award, the ASC Alfred Frondenthal Medal, and the AC Thomas Middlebrook Awards. He is also elected as one of the distinguished alumni of University of Illinois. Uh, one thing I didn't tell you, he served as a dean of un at the American University of Armenia for 16 years wh while he was holding at the same time a position at UC Berkeley. And he has created a new term, a new word for this kind of deanship across continents. He called him himself an e-dean because he was using email a great deal. <coughs> so we are very fortunate to have our men today. So Armin uh, is really an expert in the area of structural and system reliability, risk analysis, stochastic structural dynamics, and earthquake engineering. So we are very fortunate to have Armin among us today. And please welcome Armin, Professor Diak Thank you very much. Do I need the uh, you need to be wired. Yeah. So that's for your pocket. And you click. And yeah. you click through. <coughs> Thank you very much, uh, Jean-Pierre, and I'm very glad to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, this, I, I, I would have liked to say that I know this place, but this morning I had a hard time. Uh, it has changed so much. You know, we used to be in the other end of campus, uh, and campus has changed a lot. Um, I first uh, must acknowledge uh, my colleagues. Uh, Daniel Straub was a postdoc of mine at Berkeley for a couple of years. Now he's a professor at Technical University of uh, Munich. Uh, he was and continues to be engaged in this project. And Michelle Bensi is the one who does the work. She's a doctor student. Uh, and uh, uh, much of what I present is based on the work that uh, she's done under both my and Daniel's uh, supervision. The work is sponsored by the Pacific Earthquake Engineering Research Center. Um, civil infrastructure systems, such as transportation, utility systems, water, gas, power, sewage, uh, ports and harbors, communication facilities, uh, healthcare facilities, uh, protection systems, such as levees, and this particular one, probably we know more about than the others. Uh, these are backbones of modern societies. Uh, our lives depend on the functioning of these uh, infrastructures, even though most people, uh, hopefully not civil engineers, take them for granted. Uh, these, uh, in many places, are vulnerable to earthquake hazard. And in the case of uh, failure, may cause severe uh, direct and indirect consequences. Um, so to address in problems such as assessing the risk that is involved or making decisions, uh, there is <coughs> need for and allocating resources for these kinds of efforts, there is need for a decision-making process. Uh, and there is no 
system right now that does that. A lot of work has been done, but I don't think there is a system that allows this kind of decision making, risk assessment, and risk management in the broader sense. So this provides, presents the motivation for this study. What I'll do is start by talking about the objectives in this kind of effort, infrastructure risk assessment and management. I'll talk about special characteristics of these systems that make them, makes them different from other systems. Uh, then I will focus on this idea of Bayesian network, uh, why I think it is the proper uh, approach to, uh, or one very important approach, very useful approach to this problem. Because not many civil engineers are familiar with this Bayesian network, I'll give a brief outline and I'll talk about how we model random fields of particular ground motions, um, how we model the seismic hazard, how we model structural or system components, and how we model the system. Briefly on each of those, I will talk very briefly on those. I hope if there's time to demonstrate with a Bayesian network model, very simple model, for you to see uh, this particular, this updating aspect of Bayesian network, which is very rather interesting, very useful for uh, this kind of uh, problem. Uh, we have a very, very preliminary application of Bayesian network 